Hey folks, this is Vent with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Sadistic Space Survival. I'm sorry, Tin Can. This is a game that you can find on Steam's Early Access program for about 15 bucks. Now, because it is Early Access, it goes without saying that everything that you're about to see here, including this review, is subject to change. So, what is Tin Can? Well, you are in an escape pod. You barely managed to escape this exploding spaceship. You have no control over that, but the backstory is you've escaped. Now you're in this escape pod, and now you have to try and survive for as long as you can. At the moment, there is no end game goal. It's just one of those, can you beat your previous time? That's what the game is currently aiming for right now. And I would love to see some kind of end game goal, like survive for 10 minutes to be rescued on easy, survive for 15 minutes on medium, you know, different things like that. Maybe even customize it. Type in a number, uh, 20 minutes. How long would you like to try and survive for? Type in 20 minutes. Okay, you have a 20 minute game coming up. See if you can survive this. So the way this works is you've got all of these different systems surrounding you. All of these lights, all of these these uh, control panels telling you what may or may not be wrong and you're going to have these events pop up from time to time one of them might be this electrical storm which shorts out everything on your on your escape pod another one might be some kind of cold storm event where your windows will freeze over and your ship systems will be affected by the cold or likewise there's a heat event that does much the same thing there's asteroids that will hit your ship from time to time and will do damage. Um, so you're constantly going to be dealing with things breaking down over time, naturally. But you're also going to be dealing with things that break your ship immediately through these various events. Now, luckily, there is a sandbox mode. And I highly, 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 highly recommend that you jump into this first. Just to get yourself used to how everything works. My first experience with Sandbox was, all right, let's see what all of this stuff is. All right, so I'm looking around. Oh, five minutes later, I'm out of oxygen. I'm dead. Okay. And I love it because um, there's these visual cues. Uh, your vision starts to go blurry. Uh, your, your breathing becomes more labored. Now, in the Sandbox mode, there is like a little status window like it'll give you the statistics of you know like your current you know your current stats like what your breathability is what your percentage is um you know what the current temperature is different things so it it the sandbox mode will assist you in seeing an up-to-date snapshot of what your vessel uh you know what your vessel's current stats are um however in the actual game you have to rely on indicators to see, you know, how your vessel is doing. So repairing this this stuff comes in a couple of forms. Uh, let's say that you're running out of oxygen and you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I get more oxygen? Well, you've got this, and this is something I learned after four deaths. Uh, you've got this uh, carbon dioxide to oxygen converter station. And you put the, uh, the full carbon dioxide canister on the one slot and an empty oxygen uh, canister in the other slot. And it'll automatically convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. And then you go ahead and put those back and you're on your way again. You've got two of each canister so you can swap them out. One, you know, your oxygen will refill on the one while the other one's actually pumping oxygen into the air. Um, the controls are a little wonky at the moment, and I say that, what I mean by that is, if you change the keybinds, the game will still act as if you're using the default keys. So let's say that you accidentally touch a fuse and electrocute yourself. It's going to have a big F in the middle of the screen. I'm like, what is this F and why is there a meter ticking up? Well, if it reaches full, then you're dead. And it wants you to keep hitting F in order to not be electrocuted anymore, okay? Well, if you've rebound your key to E, F isn't going to do a darn thing for you. So, like, all of the key bind shortcuts, the tooltips that you see, are based off of the default key binds and not on ones that you've updated. So that needs to be fixed. 
because there were plenty of times where the game is telling me hit F to do this. I'm like, well, I rebounded to E because I'm used to E interacting with things. So I had to like remember, okay, F is E. Okay, um, left shift. Okay, got it. So I, I rebound all these keys and the default keys aren't showing up properly. So that, that needs to be addressed, I think. Um, so again, the sandbox mode um, will sort of throw things at you very slowly. Um, none of the events will pop up, random events will pop up, um, but you will still consume oxygen. Um, I had an event where, not an event, but I had a situation where uh, the control panel for my carbon dioxide or oxygen, one of the two, the filter was going. And I'm like, okay, so do I need to replace the filter? How do I do this? And I'm sitting there looking around the, the escape pod, looking for this repair filter. Like, I'm looking for a way to repair this thing. And here I just hit E to interact with it. I blow on the filter and the filter now works. So it was as simple as that. So this game is all about trial and error. It's about figuring out, okay, what is the problem and how do I fix it? That is going to be the two biggest driving forces for yourself in this game. Something's happening, power went out, or uh, this thing is no longer functioning, or I'm losing oxygen somewhere. What do I do? How do I fix it? And the game does not tell you. You do get this manual in game, but you have to read it. So you're going to be like learning on the fly as you play. Like there's no time to sit there and read this manual when you've got asteroids hitting your ship. More than likely, you're just not going to find what you need. Um, there's a, a section in the manual for error codes and error codes will pop up on these displays from time to time. So you can use the back of the manual to say, oh, this is display code error this. that That's what this means. I need to fix this or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I've played this for about, I want to say, an hour at this point, and I'm terrible. I mean, I I trust myself to fix maybe 10% of the issues that come up right now. Um, this game is crazy difficult. Um, you're going to have batteries draining on you or, you know, whatever, and then you have to put the battery in the battery charger. Um, you can cannibalize parts from your ship and put it into this repair thing. So let's say you've got this transformer in your one system that is broken or is damaged, whatever, because you 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 know that the repair code means this and you need to re repair the transformer. Well, rather than get a second transformer and replace it, you've got this magic cube box thing in the wall. And the way this works is you cannibalize parts from your ship and that gives you currency parts, invisible currency parts, that it's just a number. And then you spend that to repair the things that you put into that magic box. So I could take the warning lights from various panels, cannibalize them. They come out, they don't work, so don't bother putting them back. Um, but now you've got, say, 100 uh, parts that you could that you have now have in currency. And if you put a transformer in there that's broken... And you've got enough parts, you can hit repair, and it'll repair it, then you put it back. So it's sort of like some of the things, like the oxygen and the carbon dioxide, you have spare parts. for. Like you've got two canisters for each, and you're swapping them out. Other things, uh, like the other 80% of the game, you're going to be cannibalizing parts to repair other parts. And the question becomes, what do you cannibalize next? You've cannibalized everything that you think you can afford to lose. Now what do you do? Do you sacrifice this for that? These are decisions you're going to be making throughout your, your play. Uh, like I said, um, the game is imperfect. It's early access. Again, my biggest things right now would have to be um, the the keybinds, updating the keybinds so that the correct tooltips show whenever, like if I'm getting a prompt to hit F, don't, don't tell me that if I rebound it to E, okay? Again, I would also like some kind of end game thing to shoot for. Uh, and I'd like to be able to customize that. Again, on easy, dif there's no difficulty setting right now. There is a hard mode. There's normal and hard mode. Hardcore mode is like for leaderboard stuff. It's up, If you want to beat your head against the wall, be my guest. Um, there's also this party mode, but party mode isn't what you think. In party mode, you no longer have the manual. Rather, you've got a friend that has the manual, uh, like in Discord or something, and they will read off to you you know, they will look through the manual for you and, you know, you tell them 
the error code you're seeing, they look it up or they tell you how to repair something. So it's kind of like a cooperation. Um, there's a game similar to that. Like uh, there's a, it's like a bomb exploding thing. It, it, uh, nobody panic or everyone explodes or I don't remember the name of the game, but it's, it's one person has the manual. One person's trying to defuse this bomb. It's kind of like that. Okay. That's what party mode is, but there's no other like easy difficulty other than the sandbox and the sandbox um, you can hit escape and then you can choose the event that comes up next. Um, or you can leave it on none and just deal with things slowly, which is something I like. So, um, yeah, I do recommend this game, but I have to warn you, this is not an instant gratification game. You're going to be dying several times over for the same reason until you like buckle down and figure out, oh, this is how I deal with this one issue. I've got that under my belt. Now, how do I deal with these 50 other issues that I haven't figured out yet? You know what I mean? So, I do recommend this game. It's 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 frustrating fun. And typically, I don't go for frustrating. But it's fun enough and puzzly enough. And, well, I like space. It's thematic enough to where I would want to keep playing it. And there's a lot of potential here. Like I said, if there was some kind of end game to shoot for, um, I think that would add a lot of, you know, different ways you can customize your experience, your you know, your little campaign normal mode experience. Or, again, if you can put it on easy, that would adjust the time in which you would need to survive in the capsule or even set a time. And the game will just throw random events at you, you know, periodically. And it's all random. You never know what you're going to get next. So, yeah, check out Tin Can. But it's it's not for the faint of heart, I got to say. If you guys haven't already subscribed to me on Twitch and YouTube, that way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.